We're looking ahead now to the junk bond market. Today, Moody's reports that the global high yield default rate fell to a two-year low of 3.3% in November. Just a year ago, it was 13.6%. Now, the report also forecasts an optimistic trend for 2011 with the default rate dropping to 1.8% this time next year. Joining us now from Houston with a look at what this means for investors is Peter Ehrd. He heads the high yield team at Invesco and the high yield fund there is up almost 13 percent year to date. Thanks so much, Peter, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you. Well, let's talk about junk bond issuance. It surpassed its annual record that was back in September. Thus far, we're at about $270 billion in new issues. And you say December is going to be a very busy month. So what's driving this activity? Well, it already is a busy month, and what's driving it is backlog in part, and that, think back to the crisis. Well, when the crisis was going on, the markets were largely shut down. The amount of business to be done still builds, and so we're still working through that backlog. It isn't just our backlog, we're also taking some share from the bank loan market. So that's part of what we're doing as well. And the market's just simply bigger now. A lot of companies came into the high yield space, and they have financing activity to, to take care of as well. You know what, Peter, let me ask you a little bit about where you expect to see the most gains in the market. Are these particular industries, because we've, we've sort of been seeing a broad-based rally, if you will, in high-yield prices, not just in the last year, but for pretty much the last two years. Well, yes, the entire market has done very well. Um, our investment process is more bottoms up, where we're looking for the specific companies and not so much uh, on an industry basis. But to speak uh, more to the parts of the market, another way to look at it is, is credit quality. The very high credit quality part of the market and the, all the way down to distressed and lower credit quality uh, bonds. Now, the real wild card for next year is if the economy is strong enough that the stressed part of the market that's still remaining could take off and surprise with, it, with some upside. Now, one interesting thing, we talked about issuance for this year hit, already hitting an annual record. Do you expect to see that for 2011? And I know that at some of your comments in articles, you talk about you know investors have to put their money somewhere and yield is hard to find. So at what point are we hitting sort of asset bubble type levels? Well, um, asset bubbles, uh, that is a big question across all of the capital markets and something that we'll certainly be watching for, too. Uh, a lot of what's happening now is there's so much stimulus, monetary stimulus, is that it, it, it's spreading out across the capital markets. Uh, our view, certainly, is that you can't fill a swimming pool uh, just and fill just one part of it. The water comes in. And so what the Fed's doing spreads out across all of the capital markets, and it spreads into our part of the market as well. So it's something for us so to keep, keep an I eye on. I understand your point there, sort of the rising tide lifts all boats. But let me ask you, I know that you just sort of do a bottoms-up analysis on each of these companies. Mm -hmm. When that water goes out, what happens to the higher, entire high-yield market? There is presumably some people taking more risk than they should be. Right. Well, that always happens. There's uh, Everyone uh, in your audience is aware of the economic cycle where we have expansions and recessions. Well, in our business, there's a credit cycle where credit gets very easy to get and gets very, very hard to get. And gradually what happens is credit gets easier to get and people will tend to chase that yield. And so you can get more speculative as you go, as it were. Are you, our investment process is to back off a little bit as we go. Where in the sort of uh, credit curve are you looking right now? Uh, we're emphasizing the middle of the market. I, I do think that uh, it's possible that economic growth could surprise on the upside next year, but it's not our base case. And given uh, uh, valuations presently, bond prices are a lot higher than they were. So while that lowest part uh, of the market, the highest risk space, may perform well next year, our process, our discipline, causes us to, to shy away from it and, and concentrate more on the middle of the market, just in case something does go wrong. In terms of credit ratings, the middle would be what area? Single B. Single B area. And just quickly overseas, is that another area that you're looking to invest in? It is. Uh, we've got some staff overseas uh, with our firm. So we do uh, look for uh, investments there. Uh, we will do some emerging markets investing, although not a big part of what we do. And uh, we are involved in, in Europe. All right. Thanks so much, Peter, for joining us today. Interesting insight into the high yield market. That was Peter Arad of Invesco Fixed Income. Stay with us.